Hello guys, back again with me Marigold, one of the guys behind Team Black Mamba. In this video, we will be showing you guys the best endgame build for Great Sword. One of the few weapons which in my opinion will be best utilizing our new Frostfang Period armor. As we all know, Fatalist will be coming on October the 1st, and it might not be a bad idea to prepare for the upcoming Elder Dragon by utilizing the latest meta set on our weapon of choice. Today I've got two builds for the Great Sword, the first and my favorite one because it is very versatile is using Savage Jeeva's Chatter Splitter, Awakened for Teostra Technique. Combine that with two sets of Teostras, two sets of Reggie Bakitius Armors, and one set of Force Ramp Variant will give you three unique armor bonus set, Teostra Master Touch, Agator Secret, and the Punishing Draw from the Frost Fang. Now, Great Sword is primarily a hit and one weapon by nature, and it will benefit mostly from the punishing draw effect. The Theostra Master Touch will make that you never lose your white sharpness. You can even use it to block two or three times which is extra nice when needed. Now the decos that you are currently seeing are for Guiding Land primarily, and it has Fortify and Slinger Capacity Level 1. Well if you don't plan to run this for Guiding Land, then you can simply switch the 45 for quick shield level 1. The slinger capacity in my opinion is one of the best skill for quick sword user because it allows you to wall bang and then immediately go to TGS level 3 with the slinger animation. Second build of the quick sword is using Safijiva Dream Splitter awakened for Falcana Divinity. Combine that with Falcana armor and one piece of Frost Fang. Now this build is for you who are obsessed with high damage number. You could easily reach 3000 plus damage TGS on Sleeping Monster in Guiding Line with 45 active. It is definitely my go-to if the monster is more agile and a hit and run approach is more preferred. Sharpness might be a little bit of issue here though, especially if you are solo queue and have to do all the tenderizing parts alone and you can't afford to block too much as it will eat through your sharpness in no time. But in my experience, without additional sharpness, this set will still do okay, as long as you don't block with it or tenderize too much. Just focus on one part at a time and you'll be fine. Now with the addition of Frostfang Barrier One Piece Armor bonus set, the GS meta is redefined and the added stun effect is game changing. Both of the aforementioned builds are legit in my opinion, and it's up to you to pick one or both. I want to know your opinion of the Great Sword builds that I shared today, and your general opinion on the state of Monster Hunter right now. Please drop in the comment section below. Alright guys, I think that's all for today's videos. I hope you do like our content, and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and share this video. I will see you in the upcoming videos. Bye.